Hello, dear friends. This is Ewell Humphreys. Glad to be with you. May the Lord bless you. I want to speak to you about a five or ten minute message from the Word of God, and I'm going to speak to you on the on the subject that uh, that we are saved and secure forever. Saved and secure forever. I'm speaking to you that believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord. The Bible says over in John the sixth chapter some words that are important for us to hear. And that is, <clears throat> Jesus said, uh, No man has ever seen the Father except he which is of God. That is, himself. He has seen the Father. Verily I say unto you, He that believes on me has everlasting life. I and my Father are one. So, Jesus is saying no man has ever seen God the Father. God is a, the Father is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in truth and in spirit. And may the Lord bless these few words to your life. Amen. The fact is, Jesus is with the Father, was with the Father from the beginning. He was of the Father, part of the Father. Part of the Godhead, we call the Godhead, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And he that believes on me, Jesus said, has everlasting life. Now, everlasting life means just what he said, everlasting. It means that if you're saved by the grace of God, you're saved forever. And I want you to know that and <clears throat> enjoy the truth of it. And realize that, that you're one with God and you're going, you're going to be secure as long as as God lives, you're going to live. Everlasting life is yours. So the Bible says over in John, the 10th chapter, Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice. God speaks to us in our heart, and He speaks to us in our conscience. And sometimes He speaks to us through the Word of God as we read it, often through the Word, and sometimes he speaks to us through other people. I hope and pray that I'm speaking to you right now as the Lord gives me a word for you. He said, my sheep, hear my voice. I want you to hear my voice because the Lord is speaking through me. Even a poor preacher like myself, but God says, I put my words in your mouth. I covered you in the shadow of my hand and I will speak to you and through you. And God speaks to his children. God speaks through his preachers. God speaks sometimes through parents, sometimes through friends, sometimes through a little child. God will speak to you. And he said, I, I have, I, I know them. I know them. You see, Jesus knows you very well. He knows you from the beginning. He known you before you were ever born. And you have trusted him. And he's your Lord and he's your Savior. And he's your God. And he said, I know them. I know them by name. I know what he's going through. I know where she is. I know all about them. And then he says, and they follow me. We need to follow Jesus. And other ways that we can look at life is to go on our way, but we need to learn to follow Jesus in his way. Not our way, but his way. Always looking to God and Christ Jesus. And he said, I give unto them eternal life. You see, eternal life never ends. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Now Jesus said, you'll never perish. You'll never perish if you believe in him. And he said, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. You see, when you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord, then you are in the hand of the Lord Jesus. And nobody can pluck you out because they'd have to overcome Christ and put you out of his hand. And then he said, My Father, which is greater than I am, greater than all, he is, he, he, uh, uh, no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. And so Christ's hand is in the Father's hand. And so, praise God, none is able to pluck them out of the Father's hand. Then he said, I and my Father are one. They're the same. In many ways, they're the same. Praise God. And so, when Jesus went to that cross, it was God going to the cross. When Jesus died upon that tree, it was God dying for you and for me. 
Martin Luther used to say regarding the cross, what a wonderful, stupendous thing, God forsaken by God. When Jesus cried out, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Luther said, that's the cry of God, God forsaken by God. Oh, praise the Lord, I and my Father are one. And we need to know that and realize that and recognize the truth that God is with us to the end. To the end. Now sometimes when you're a Christian, you know, the Lord will allow you to bear a burden. And you'll rejoice at many times and at other times your heart will be broken. And you'll be bound down with a burden. Well, praise God. You've got a burden, but you don't have to be sorrowful and dejected. You can look up and say, I'm not going to be depressed. I'm trusting God. I believe the Lord's with me. He's going to help me with my burden. The Lord knows you've got a burden, but He also calls you and says, Cast your burden on the Lord, for He cares for you. Jesus says, Bring me your burden. Cast it on me. Leave it at my feet. Trust me. Quit worrying about that thing, dear Christian, and start looking to God and knowing He's bigger, He's better, and it's free, it's free. Come to me, all you that labor are heavy laden. Come to me, come unto me, the water of life, Jesus said in the book of Revelation, and drink from me freely the water of life. It's without money and without price. You just come and say, Lord, forgive me. Repent is forgive me, forgive me. Repent means Turn away from the way you're going and start going the other way. Turn from yourself and turn to Christ. Turn from the old world out there. Turn to the kingdom of heaven. Turn to God and Jesus. Come unto me. Come unto me. And be free. In New York Harbor there is a great statute. And it's called the Statute of Liberty. And it's a statute of a lady. They call her Lady Liberty. She has a crown on her head and she has a lamp in her hand that she's holding out and on the description on the, on that at the bottom of that statute says something like this come all ye that are poor and hurting and homeless from the refuse of your teeming shore come and welcome I lift my lamp beside the golden door Praise the Lord. Freedom for those who come to Christ. Freedom for those who come to America to live a life of freedom. Now then, we need to recognize this is true with the call of God. He calls us. And He says, Come. Come unto me. All oh, you that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Come unto me and let me lead you. I am the good shepherd. Let me bring you into my fold and let me care for you, provide for you and love you and bring you home at last. I will help you with that burden. I will lift up that heavy weight upon you. I will work out that problem you are facing. I will give you peace. I will help you rejoice in the, the good things of life. I will help you know and appreciate where all good things are coming your way. Come unto me. I will give you life without money and without price, come unto me. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, free from the law. Oh, happy condition. Oh, Jesus provides a perfect salvation. Oh, we are cursed by the law and we're bruised by the fall. But oh, Christ has redeemed us once and for all. Once and for all. Oh, praise the Lord. Once and for all, O oh sinner, receive it. Once and for all, O oh friend, believe it. Jesus Kirk, come to the cross, your burden will fall. Christ has redeemed us once for all. Once for all, dear friend. He's done it for you. He's done it for me. Believe. Now, if you're not sure you're going to heaven, pray a brief prayer with me. As I close, pray this brief prayer. Dear God, please forgive me. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe he died for me. I believe he paid for all my sins upon the cross at Calvary. I believe he rose again. And I believe he is coming back. Come in my heart. 
help me live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Pray a prayer like that, and you'll live forever. And you can know that you're safe and saved and secure forever. Amen.